Yo, 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 what's happening, people? Manchester is red. Old Trafford is a fortress once again. The mentality has been set. Standards have been set by Eric Ten Hag. What a performance by Manchester United in the Manchester Derby today. Welcome back to Greeks Talks, everyone. I know it's been a minute. I haven't recorded for over a month. Obviously, World Cup was happening. I was on other channels doing that, so didn't really have time to do on my own writing and all that. But I'm back, and what an amazing time to come back. Obviously, I was going to come back if we lost anyway, so I wasn't, like, ducking or anything, but... Winning makes it so much sweeter to come back. So make sure you guys hit that like button, share, subscribe, and all of that. Let's get into the game. Lineups. Woke up at 7 a.m. Saw the lineup. I was a little mixed by it. We saw on my Twitter. Um, I like the attack kind of. Uh, the diamond set. Uh, I wanted Fred in there. Obviously, you guys see me tweet for like the last two weeks. Fred needs to play these kind of games. The big six games where we're not going to have that much of the ball. And Eric Tenau started him, and he was amazing, which we'll get into later. Um, Erickson starting was also kind of a mix. I'm like, interesting. We'll get into him later. Um, Shaw center back was really surprising. I really thought that he'd bring back uh, Alessandro Martinez, the butcher, but he didn't because I think he has much, that much match fit in a sense because he's only played about 120 minutes since he came back from the World Cup. Um, so Luke Shaw's been amazing at center back, so he proved him. Malasia left back after that, obviously, since Shaw was in center back, and Juan Bissaka came in for Dalo because Dalo picked up an injury. So that was pretty much it. And the attack, Martial was declared match fit, so he started in Rashford, who has been in scintillating form which we shall also continue. But, yeah. In the City's lineup, I expected Pep to go back to his basics after a loss. That's pretty much what Pep does. So, I'm not surprised. He does not want to tinker against us, obviously. He, in a sense, that shows how much he respects us. He wasn't really going to experiment, in a sense. But, into the game. The first half, I thought we were really amazing in the first half. Eric Ten Hag outcoached Pep in that first half because that front four, five, like, the pressing was amazing. Man marking. Everyone had a man. Bruno was on... Cancelo slash Ake uh, and Bernardo. Um, Casemiro was picking on Bernardo as well. Erickson was on Rodri. Rashford was occupying that left set, that left side to mark them. Fred was marking De Bruyne like under here we used to mark Indian Hazard. I expected that to happen. That's what I. That's why I wanted Fred in because he could be, he could be a nuance to KDB. In that first half, we were absolutely amazing. We waited to pick our moments. We were like, we were like a box. We were like Floyd Mayweather. We were like, mm, let me see what we could do. We picked our moments perfectly. I thought we played a fantastic first half. We should have been going into the lead at halftime. I thought Marcus Rashford had a couple opportunities. Obviously, they weren't the easiest, but it was still good opportunities. But that last 10 minutes worried me because I saw City over the gaps, the gaps, the gaps. But all in all, that first half performance was really solid in terms of players' performances in the first half. I thought our, def- I thought our defense was absolutely solid, in my opinion. Um, The fullbacks were fantastic. Malasi was backing up the press. Aaron Wan Bissak was backing up the press. I think Malasi was very quick in his fouls as well, which he wasn't getting yellows. They weren't aggressive enough, but they were tactical fouls, which I, you guys know me, I love tactical fouls. That's why I'm saying they've been the best team in the league in so, for so many years. They know how to tactically foul. Um, our passing was crisp. We were actually beating their press a couple of times. We were passing out the back, which shows our improvement on the ball. So first half, absolutely fantastic. In the attack, obviously, a couple of passes. Like Bruno had an opportunity to like put in Malasia. He messed up that pass. I thought Martial, the link play, like he, his, he was holding up the ball well, but his decision-making was off. Obviously, I don't think he was 100% match fit, to be honest, which is why he got hooked at halftime. And just the reactions were slow. Like, sometimes a couple second balls that he could have gotten in one, they weren't there. But still, all in all, very, very, very good performance from the first half. But like I said, my hesitation started kicking in the last 10 minutes because I saw City open up the gaps. They clocked that they had a lot of overloads on the wide spaces, and it started abusing them a little bit. But all in all, but from City's perspective, that first 35 minutes, they were absolutely had no idea what to do. They were so slow on the ball. Bernardo Silva was doing quick turns at their own, in like their own side of the pitch. I'm like, what's this guy doing? Like, how did he not get dizzy? Some people would say that his head is in Barcelona. That's for Man City fans to discuss. That's not that's not my club. I'm not gonna discuss how bad Bernardo Silva's intentions are. But the center backs were slow. They were just constantly passing back and forth. Jock Concello was doing a couple nice little runs. Full Foden was out pretty much out the game in that first half. Erling Holland was absolutely invisible. He was cast with the ghost. Uh, Mares, my last team was doing really well on him. KDB was getting marked by, uh, what's his name, Fred. Rodgy was picking up a couple of nice spots, but not really finding anything. So we did a really good job in that first half to really shut them down. But the second half started, and Man City, what I expected them to do was come out to what's firing, and they did. They were absolutely amazing in their passing the first 15, 20 minutes of the first half. Uh, second half, excuse me. Passing it direct, really quick. They picked up the pace of the game. And when Grealish came on for Phil Foden, they capitalized. The gaps open. De Bruyne a nice pass to Grealish for the assist. Um, and good goal from Jack Grealish. This guy always put, 
uh, what's it called, pulls up against us and scores somehow. I don't know. I don't, maybe he hates us or something like that. I think he's a United fan, but he still he always scores against us when they're doing well. So it was a good goal from them. And from then on, I'm like, this is going to be long. City were dominating. They took the possession. Absolutely. They were absolutely amazing in that second half. And then my manager, Eric Ten Hag, clocked it. He's like, let me fix something. And he did. He made substitutions. Obviously, Mar- like I said, Marshall got hugged at halftime. Anthony came on. I don't think we'll, we'll talk. You know what? Today's the day of positive, so we're not going to talk about that. But he took Erickson off. He brought on Garnacho. And Garnacho changed the game, in my opinion. The, just having that threat on the left, Rashford was in the middle, occupying spaces. Erickson on the right, and Garnacho, just a good sub. Uh, therefore, City didn't have the overfields on the flank anymore. They had to beat us through the middle, and our midfielders were ready for that battle. And just that goal, that first goal was an absolutely amazing pass by Casemiro. Was Rashford offside? In my opinion, I do think he was offside. He was interfering with the play. But, man, you'll never hear me complain about a referee that's just going my way. I ain't that type of guy. So, I'll take whatever we can get. Everyone else that's complaining, they can absolutely hold that. I don't care. So, good pass by Casemiro. Good good job from Rashford to not actually touch it. And Bruno, good job to tell him to stay away from the ball. And absolutely superb finish by Bruno. And I'm not going to lie, my stream cut off for like the next two minutes. I didn't see the, I didn't see the goal for <laughs> the second one. But I watched the replay. Garnacho really, really well to cut it back to Rashford. Just really good play by Man United. And we know my uh, coach Cam said it was on their live stream on FTBO. Um, we're doing it right now. He said that Man City, we've seen this. Once you can see that first goal, that next two, three minutes is very crucial because their heads are rattled, especially because of the decision went against their way for the first goal. Um, and we saw it capitalize within two, three minutes. We saw it against Real Madrid where Real Madrid scored that first goal and then Man City's heads were absolutely rattled and, Man- and Real Madrid capitalized. And that's what Man United did today. Mentality monsters, Kloppo, come get your chain back, bro. You don't have that chain no more. That shit, that shit came to Manchester now. And absolutely, good job to get that second goal. And from then on, Warriors defended their box absolutely brilliant. Nothing was coming into that box. A couple penalty shots, but that, that weren't penalty shots. But absolutely amazing. What is this one mean for Manchester United though? That's the, that's the game summary and recap. Um, for me. These next two weeks, uh, this week and the next year, next two games are very vital because we've obviously been in amazing form. But everyone, everyone's gonna say, "Yeah, you didn't beat anyone." Obviously, we obviously for me, my thing is you beat whoever's in front of you. Um, and we did. We beat Forest. We beat Bournemouth. We beat Wolves. We beat Fulham for the World Cup break. We dominated the cups. So I like I said, you can only beat who's in front of you. We had our hard part of the schedule in the first half of the season, which we also handled very well. Now it's time for us to get a couple of easy games, get our form up, continue that form, and we absolutely did. And this was a test. Manchester City, the Derby, they absolutely annihilated us. Will we fight in revenge? Will we get our blood? Will we get will, will we get it back in blood? And we absolutely did. That shows me how much Manchester United have improved. We also beat them in our, playing our own style. Yes, we sat back a little bit, but we were tactical. We pressed. Ten Hag has shown his versatility and adaptability into this team. He shows that he's not only going to play one way. If he needs to play a different way to win, he will absolutely do it. And that's what I want from my manager. You don't always have to win pretty. That's not the Man United way. The Man United way is entertaining football in the wings, direct attacking, and winning. That's the Man United way. As people say, the Man United way every single time. It's not always, yes, we play a little counterattack, but that's okay. Fergie used to do it against Arsenal because he knew he couldn't go toe-to-toe with them like, in terms of possession, so he sat back and he waited for his moments. Winning, all that matters is the three points. And today, we got the three points. And Eric Ten Hag has changed his team. You see it in the mentality of the players. You see the post-game pressers. Bruno has become a leader of men. He's leading this team as a captain. Yes, we have other leaders in Casemiro and Varane, but he is a captain. He took that armband, and he's leading. And he's, he talked about how a couple of months ago, three, four months ago, his players were playing for themselves, but not anymore. This is a team united. Pun intended. This is a team united, and they absolutely showed that in the mentality and remorse. I didn't, I'm not going to lie. So far this season, when we go 1-0 up, I know it's a game set wrap because we, don't, we haven't dropped a point ever since, ever, uh, once we lead. Well, I think we're the only team in the prime to have that. But when we trail, I wanted to see it. Obviously, we came back against other teams, but against the big boys, Man City, if we go to 1-0 down, can we come back? And we absolutely showed that we can't come back. And today, we showed that we responded quickly. Even after we considered the goal, yes, Man City had a full possession, but automatically, we kind of saw the chef in was rising, a couple corners. We saw the, the momentum shifting back into our way, even after we conceded. That's very important. And today, we showed that, like I said, mentality has been set. Every single player is willing to go out there for each other. These are mental warriors. Yes, some, yes, and against low blocks, we know how to break down low blocks. But when we have against big opposition, can these players back each other, defend as a unit? And we absolutely show that today. What does this mean in the long run? Obviously, 
first step conquered. We conquered Man City. Tough game at Palace away on Wednesday because Mark Rashford will probably not play because he picked up an injury. His hip, all that, obviously, obviously played almost 90 minutes because another man, Warrior, which I'll get into a whole monologue about Mark Rashford. But Palace, obviously, you beat the big boys. But will you get complacent now or will you continue this winning form? Because Palace away is not easy. I've seen tough teams go to Selhurst Park and crumble. We saw with Arsenal last season. They were in their top four charge and they absolutely got battered by Crystal Palace. We don't. We, we will not have our best attacker in that game, but that course is coming in. That's a nice little spark. Garnacho will probably start. Be Palace away, and then next week we got the league leaders in Arsenal. We'll see what they do tomorrow against Spurs. If they drop points, hey man, things are percolating. In Manchester, things are percolating. Um, so that's gonna be another tough game. Arsenal, I think, are better team than Man City, so I think they will be a much tougher test as well. To be honest with you, they will not be playing this slow football. They know how to play direct, quick, and it will be at the Emirates, which has. I say Old Trafford's the fortress. Emirates is even bigger fortress because they haven't lost on that pitch this season. We lost at Old Trafford the first game. Arsenal have not lost to Emirates. They've only dropped points once against Newcastle, which is a tough opposition. So I want to see, will our players be ready for that challenge? Because if we beat Arsenal as well, if they lose tomorrow, that gap can get closed on to two points. And from then on, us United fans, we cannot dodge the allegations no longer. We, are, we will be in the title race. Right now, in my opinion, what I think will happen so far this season, I think I think top four for me is guaranteed. I'm not gonna lie. I think this type of win. We know we play good football. We know how to beat we know how to be small teams. We know how to beat big teams. Um obviously some mid table teams will trouble us. Like a Brighton away will not be an easy game. But I trust this manager. I trust I trust these players. So I think that that means certain. Will we have bigger aspirations? We'll see. Because we still have Europa. We have a cup charge in uh, Carabao and even FA Cup. We have uh, Reading in a couple weeks, and then we have the semifinals against Spurs. But for me, a trophy is minimum. This team needs to win a trophy this season. That's when I fully know we're back. Because once you win that trophy, that builds your team bond much, much closer as well. That, that first trophy is so crucial. These players, Bar, Martial, Rashford, and uh, like De Gea, they have not won together. Those are the only, I think those are the only three players, maybe at Luke Shaw, who, wasn't, who was injured that season, that have won a trophy together. So these players need to know how to win together. Because once you know how to win one together, it'll kick off. And from then on, the sky's the ceiling. And Right now with Man United, I think the sky's the ceiling. Obviously, we will have new owners. I haven't been on the channel since um when it was announced that we're getting sold. Do not let us get Dubai. Do not let us get Dubai. We will have new owners. We will upgrade on players. We will get that striker in the summer. We will get that center mid in the summer. I know James Duck is talking about top four and everything. Top four is a guarantee. We will be in UCL next year. I promise you that. So, that Man United... It's going to be a fun season. It's going to be the next four months. are going to be absolutely hectic. So many games. It's got to be here for a ride. And for the first time, I'm not going to lie, since maybe 2016, 2017, I feel Man United are actually back. Just like everything is so positive about the club. We have the perfect manager who could be here for the next decade. We have players that you may fall like Marcus Rashford, I'll get into soon. So like that makes you fall in love with the club again. So from that perspective, Man United is going to be a nice end to the season. So that's my perspective in terms of long run, short run. In terms of short term, game by game, just focus, just focus at, by, on every opponent. Do not think what what the town hawk in, in the uh, person in the morning. The league does not start till April. In terms of title race, that's what Sir Alex Ferguson was saying. He reiterated that today. So focus on game by game. Next up, focus on how you beat Palace. After Palace, you focus on how to beat Arsenal and continue, continue, continue on how to beat your opponent game by game. Do not get sucked. The players can do not need to get sucked into a title race. Us fans are just for fans. We could we could dream whatever we want, but these players need to be focused on the game by game basis and focus on performing their best ability. Let's go into the players now. Uh, De Gea for me was solid today. They didn't even think. I don't even think he had to make a save. I really don't think he had to make a save. You know. Good performance. That should be recently. Yeah, man. Like, sometimes he was hitting the ball, like hospital passes. A couple times he actually did nice passes. So, very mixed performance. The defense, all of them, absolutely superb. Like, I have no, I, I do not have a bad word to say about the defense today. Tyrell Malassi, I had him already since Alfred tries. Locking him up. He did nice quick fouls to uh, unsettle him. Morris never really got past him. Absolutely dog. Warrior. That performed, like, it's the way that he performed against uh, Liverpool. Because I think Arsenal, he wasn't that good. But against Liverpool, he's absolutely amazing. Today, that was kind of the performance that we needed. Dog. Absolute dog. Juan Bissaka, man, I was not familiar with your game because he was absolutely amazing today. He has shown that he could be a capable backup to Diogo Dalo. And 
come summer, I do think we need to sell him because I, I do think that we could do better if Milo Goose will come my way in the summer. But Juan Bissaka has proven himself to be a serviceable backup, and we will actually we might actually recuperate some of that money that we, uh, we spent on him. We could get, probably get 30 mil from him. He's a, he's proven that he could be a top Premier League right back in a top team. So, absolutely props to him from that. Luke Shaw, man, I don't have enough adjectives to describe this guy. This guy was absolutely amazing. He had Erling Holland in prison. Erling Holland, bro, I did not see the whole game. Like, I don't think he even had a shot on target. A couple times I got blocked and everything. Luke Shaw, man, this guy is amazing at left back, but even at center back, he's even better. His reading of the game is absolutely top notch. His passing is amazing, which is why I want him at fullback because like, he's progressive. He's progressive heaven in that sense, but what a center back, what a left back. And the, the best thing about him, his emergence as a left center back, is we do not have Lissandro Martinez against Barcelona for the first leg. He's suspended. And two months ago, every United fan, that's the end of the world, man. We don't have Leach. We're going to have to play Varane. We're going to have to play, Varane, we're gonna have to play Maguire or Lindelof. No, no, no. Luke Shaw has emerged. And he just put against the best, uh, most informed striker on the planet. And Erling Holland, he quieted him. No disrespect to Robert Lewandowski, but that could be easy day as well. So Luke Shaw. Great, great performance from that aspect. Like, ten, like 9, 10 out of 10. I just didn't put the foot wrong. Rafael Varan, the silent killer, man. This guy, people people, people have been uh, talking dirty on his name. Four-time UCL winner, World Cup winner. These games are nothing for him. He absolutely was a mess today. The passing was good. The reading of the game is good. This guy's a top-level center back. People are going to say, oh, he makes us play in a low block. Nah, nah, nah. This guy can play in any type of line. He's a fantastic center back. Reading of the game, superb, elite. One of the best center backs of our generation. I don't know why fans don't say that, but maybe because he's not aesthetically pleasing on the ball and everything. But when we go to war, I know Rafael Varane will be there. That's all that matters to me. I spoke on Wamasaka, but that's pretty much it for the defense. Midfield, Casamigos, Casemiro. Honestly, the passing was not that good today. I, I'm, I'm going to say that. But the beginning of the game is still good. Still put a couple of challenges. Cut, nice, uh, nice interception on Holland in the box. Holland was blowing up for a shot and he tipped it away from him. He stole it. That's clutch, 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 clutch. The veteran, t- the veteran move in the end of the game to kind of time race. That's where you need the dirty uh, black magic. They're, the dark arts of football. Casemiro obviously brings that. And he also played the assist for that first goal. So no matter what, he contributed. And he was still decent. He was still really good today. And you know, once we get that midfield partner for him, it'll be so much better. So much better. So Casemiro, world-class player. Still a good, decent performance today. I'll probably say like a 7 out of 10. The passing, obviously, probably his weakest part of this game. But still, he plays some good passes. So, no matter what, he's still good. Christian Eriksen, you know what? I, sp- I said I'm not speaking on that yesterday, so I'm not going to speak about Christian Eriksen. All I'm going to say, we'll hold, we'll hold that discussion for another day, but this guy, traffic going. That's all I'm going to say. But we need to upgrade on him ASAP. He needs to be a bench player. Federico Rodgers, Fred. Fred. Fred Rodriguez. What a performance, man. This guy absolutely locked up KDB. I know KDB got an assist, but KDB usually get his, gets his. So, he did a fantastic job. Obviously, guys are going to open up, but... The passing today was actually really good. Obviously, Fred's biggest concern, like the biggest concern about him, is his passing. But the one touch play, Fred can thrive on that. If I need f- having Fred to play like long balls, uh, but the one touch passing he could do, he was actually amazing at that. He linked play really good. Did a couple passes on his right foot as well because he's usually very left footed. So really good performance by him. And we're gonna need him against maybe a, maybe against the Palace we might need him because Palace, South Park Parkway, like I said, will not be easy. But against Arsenal, absolutely needed. He will have to mark Odegaard. Mark De Bruyne. Next up is Martin Odegaard, who's in better form than Kevin De Bruyne. So, tough task on that as well. But Fred, 9 out of 10 today. Absolutely amazing. Bruno. It's like I said, he had the mistake with Malasia in the first half, but still. Got that goal. And just the pressing, the off-ball work rate, man. Bruno, that's the one thing you'll never complain about. Bruno, off-the-ball work rate. This guy will run his socks off 90 minutes, 95 minutes a game. And he was absolutely amazing. And to get that goal, everyone's questioning, will Bruno, can Bruno score in big games? Scored a big game today. It's an amazing goal. Excuse me. Great performance. Good passing sometimes. Don't miss on that. But yeah, I don't think Bruno can score that goal. Excuse me. Martial gets a six for me. I thought, like I said, I spoke about the reactions were slow. Yada, yada. Obviously, good link up play. I mean, we did miss him in the second half because you saw that nobody was able to stick that ball to themselves. So blew it. But I got Woot Red Course is coming in. And Martial, I think he needs a rest. On, sun, on Wednesday will be really good for him. And hopefully he's ready uh, ready firing for Arsenal next week because we will need him in that game as well. So 6 out of 10 for Martial. And Marcus Rashford. Franchise, franchise. Talk to him. Nice ice in his veins. What a player. This guy, out of all the players that Eric Tenahog has improved, 
He took a Marcus Rashford, whose menta- mental health in terms of football was in the gutters. Ralph Ragnick ruined everything. Ralph Ragnick almost did irreversible damage on his club, but he survived. And his mental health was in the gutters. PSG talks, all of that kind of stuff. And Eric Ten Hag just took one look at him and said, I'm going to fix you, and I'm going to make you the best player at this club. And that's absolutely what he did. Every time Eric Ten Hag looks at Marcus Rashford, he's blushing. That's what it feels like. Marcus Rashford has scored in every single game post-World Cup. Nine games in a row, he scored at Old Trafford. Do you know how amazing that is? Wayne Rooney never did that. Cristiano Ronaldo never did that. That's how good Marcus Rashford has been. He's the best attacker on this team. He's the most important attacker on this team. If he scores, we're going to win. Everything goes through him. My man, in a contract year, Man United talk about wage cap and everything. And I've been that, bro. Give this guy the keys to Buckingham Palace. Give him the keys to Old Trafford. Give him the keys to the Manchester. Even though he should really have the keys to Manchester because of what he did off the pitch. Give him everything. Super max. Luke Shaw as well. Super max. Super max him. This guy deserves everything. We cannot let this guy leave. He is the face of Man United. He is what's going to lead us in the future. And his improvement in his game. Not just the finishing. We all know Marcus Rashford could score goals. Two seasons ago, he was top three winger in, in, in the world. In terms of when he doesn't score in games, like he's not in there. But like even against Everton, before he scored that penalty, he was a ball. He got two assists. His playmaking has gone up. His dribbling has gone up. Everything has improved about him. And that's what Eric Ten Hag needed to do this season because he will say yes, he got back in the market. But he still took over a group of players that were absolutely mentally drained from last season because it was the worst season of their careers in a Man United jersey. And he took them from the floor and he picked them up and he improved pretty much every single one of them. Except maybe you could say Jaden Sancho, but he's coming back soon. So we'll see. Because Eric Ten Hag sent him to the mountains in the Netherlands. And if Jaden Sancho comes back fit and fire, then go, bro. Eric Ten Hag is the greatest thing that's ever happened to my life. This guy's amazing. And absolutely, what a performance from Marcus Rashford today. Especially playing with a bad hip or I don't know what injury he picked up. Thigh, hamstring, hip. I don't know. But he wasn't feeling it, but he still scored. He came through in the moment that he, we needed him to. I think like almost like 30% of his goals have been match winners or something like that. Dude, that's absolutely amazing. Watch. And Eric Ten Hag done an amazing job. In terms of the substitutes, the only meaningful substitute was pretty much probably, um, what's his name? Anthony didn't really do that much for me. But Garnacho, this guy's electric, 18. He is a future starboard man United. And I love the way Eric Ten Hag has kind of eased him in. Um, and he's gotten, he's gotten his moments. He's gotten his goal in moments. He doesn't, he doesn't have to thrust him into the limelight and be a starter because everyone else is struggling. That's, a, that's another good thing of Rashford's uh, improvement. Rashford is a lot. Rashford being so good has allowed Garnacho to be under the radar and just pick, come off the bench and be electric and cause damage in games. That's what he did. He changed the game against the Fulham because he scored the winner. Against Sociedad, he scored the winner. And today, he got the game-winning assist. Instant impact. And this kid will be amazing. And obviously, you know, in talks to extend him as well. Amazing players to have in our ranks. We have Ahmad coming back from Rome. Facundo has impressed Ten Hag finally. We have Jaden Sancho coming back. Anthony is still only 21-22. Young wingers. All we need now is that striker up top to and to put no, to call the piece all together. Harry Kane or the best lobster in the world, and Victor Osiman, whoever it is, you just gotta get them that nine and put it together. But Man United, absolutely amazing today. You guys rock my world. What a game! Um, I'm so confident now. I'm like, I haven't been this happy about Man United in years. Probably since I haven't felt this good about the club. But in terms of being happiness, ever since that um that time that we were at top of the table where we were just winning. Games one know about through a Paul Pogba like master class or something like that. That's how good. That, that's the last time I felt this good about the club, and I'm just, I feel so good right now. What a game! What a performance! In terms of Man City, I'll go. I'll talk a little bit about them. My thoughts on them. Honestly, I've been saying this for a month now. I think they've gotten worse since last season. I think losing players like Raheem Sterling and Jesus and Zinchenko and only replacing them with one player. I know Erling Haaland just put up the stats, but they've lost that fluidity about them. We saw it today, bro. They look so lethargic on the ball. That's why I say Arsenal's better than them. When I watch Arsenal, I'm proper entertained. When I watched, when I used to watch City five years ago in 2018, the most entertaining team in the league, bro. Leroy Sané, Raheem Sterling, Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Okai Gundogan, everything. They were so entertaining. We didn't have that today. But, yeah, man. Just, they just look different. They need to do something. Pep needs to tinker again. He needs to, he needs to change something. Because right now, honestly, I think we're a better team than them. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not joking. I think we're better than them. That's the worst team. That's the worst city team we've beaten. I think this team, like, 1920 was pretty bad as well when we did the double over them. But 
This team is just as bad in my opinion, man. They just they don't seem that threatening to me. They need a winger. They need a quick winger. Rafael Leal, Vicha, I can't pronounce his last name. They need to change something. Maybe in the midfield. Like Gundogan not even getting a minute today. Like I think Gundogan has been their best midfielder this season, in my opinion. Like he's threatening. He's an interior. Like he could cause damage. Phil Foden, what he has done to Phil Foden, in my opinion, is absolutely bro. Phil Foden is not a left winger. He's an eight or a ten or a false nine. He needs to play centrally. Like, bro, because usually when Phil Foden plays against us, he absolutely dominates us. Like, Raheem Sterling, Wamba Saka had him in his pockets all day, every day. But usually, Phil Foden gives Wamba Saka trouble. But he didn't do that today. So I think it's a mixture of Pep not putting him in the right positions, but Foden's development, in a way, in a sense, has kind of stagnated. He was, like, a couple of my boys put him in Mbappe talk, which I was extremely ludicrous. But at least he never really warranted that kind of respect. But at least you could kind of see it. Like, the trajectory was up, 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 up. But right now, it's... Flat, it's a flat line, and for me, I think that's terrible. They need their center back to fit. Obviously, the moment I saw John Stones not playing today, I'm like, Dang, facts. For me, John Stones is their absolute best center back. He's probably top three center backs in the league. I know my boy Umir says he's the best in the world, which fair enough. That, that he's very, he's very good. I, I'm not gonna disagree with that. He's an absolute amazing center back, and not having him, and his reading of the game is absolutely elite. So that was good news for us. But yeah, Man City have to change something because it's not looking good for them. Pep's, already, Pep's rattled. That's the first thing. Pep is absolutely rattled. He's like, oh, we lost to Carabao. We lost. We, he basically can see the Premier League today. He's like, oh, we've won enough. Bro, if City don't win the Prem or Champions If they win the Champions League, obviously, covers everything up. But if they don't win neither, bro, this guy's rattled. And we saw Jose Rattleton out of the league. Arteta is coming. ETH is coming. The Arsenal, Manchester United rivalry is back. And it's going to So I don't know, man. Man City have to change something. We'll see what they do. That's not my issue, though. That's not their issue for me right now. I know what my team needs. I know the way they're playing. And, you know, maybe 15 days, we're broke. So, we're not going to do shit. But if we could get a center mid in on loan, it doesn't have to be a special center mid. Just someone that can win a duel. Hey, man. Never know what could happen. But, yeah, that was pretty much it. That was my match review. Um, it's great to be back recording um, and hopefully do more content. Obviously, I'll be on other channels. Um, oh, what's it called? Let me make sure you follow my socials. That's my Twitter at Michael underscore Grix26, Grix Talks TikTok, which I'll go record right now. Um, where else can you catch me? You can catch me on Grizz's channel, Grizz Con. Make sure you guys follow that football connage. It's like a second channel name. I'm on there every week recording Premier League Connage. So I'll be guest for that game. I hope there's a city fan in there because I'm t- I'm t- I didn't put my chest out yesterday against Daps, my guy Daps. Because I was I was nervous going into the game, but my chest is fully out now. I'm so gassed. This is the man that I grew up watching. Grew up loving the reason why they made me fall in love with the sport. I'm getting that main United back. So chess is out. If we beat Arsenal, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start saying some wild stuff. And yeah, I'm guess for that. I'll probably I'll probably hop, jump on the Colin show today as well. I'm definitely I'm definitely there for that. And where else can you catch me? Pretty much it. Sometimes maybe I'll pop up on, uh, I'll pop up on different channels, but mainly follow me on Twitter. Um, um, there is my links for my articles as well. Urban pitch I write for them now, which is nice. I wrote an article on Arsenal. I think I'll write a great article about Greece football next. But yeah, hope all the you Manchester United fans that's probably what's most of you gonna watch this. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the victory. It's an amazing game. But don't get too ahead of ourselves. We got Palace next. If we beat Arsenal, Arsenal, then we could really start talking. But for now, let's move on to the radar. Our Bible fans are gonna start putting us in title title talk. You know what? As my uh, some people say, two point we're only two points away from safety now, all that kind of stuff. Just enjoy your victory. Manchester is red once again. Old Trafford is a fortress. Standards have been set. Mentality has been set. Everything is a good feeling about the club. It's culture camp says the redeemed team. All that kind of stuff. It's a good time to be a Man United fan, so let's enjoy it because you never know what could happen. You never know. Ex- always expect the unexpected, but yeah, it's been a fantastic game. Great talking to you guys. Make sure you hit that like button, share, subscribe, and all that. And that's it been for, for me today. Peace.